In this video, let's talk about sexuality. I'd like to share with you my own personal story about how I survived 20 years of active sex life in the gay world. I've noticed that there is a biological clock in sexuality that activates the sexual impulses to such a high level that it's almost impossible to be uh, in my situation it's impossible to me to be myself in those moments so usually in the spring and in the fall there are moments of this crazy uh, eruption of desire for sexual contact for crazy uninhibited sex and with a lot of different people and what i've noticed also is that in those moments when i go into public spaces and i and i see men that i find attractive it compounds the desire to have sex with the kind of man that I've seen at the park or the kind of man I've seen at a coffee shop. And so what I used to do, I would go immediately on the hookup websites and search for sex. And so to, to understand, to, to not have sex stand in the way of your normal life, I think what we need to do is we need to first accept its power. It has enormous power. Sex, kind of like with dogs. Have you had a dog? a male dog that at certain times during the year, the dog just vanishes for days sometimes. In Poland, I had a dog, I grew up with dogs, and I remember there were days when the dog would just disappear and you would look for the dog and we knew why the dog disappeared. The dog went out there searching for mates, right? To have to mate. And in Poland, uh, back 20 years ago, we did not have vets. Um, sterilizing the animals so every dog was you know, a real animal with these real impulses and desires to mate with other dogs and so with sexuality it's so potent the energy is so potent the impulses are so real that sometimes they can actually take you out of your life and take you into a dangerous territory and I remember being in those dangerous territories, sex in public spaces. I remember Lakeshore Drive in the evenings in Chicago. I used to rollerblade. I used to ride bicycle looking for sex every day in the summer when the weather was nice. That's how powerful those impulses are, especially if you're younger in your 20s and 30s. And the worst thing that we can do is to reject that energy and to suppress it. We don't want to suppress it we actually want to learn how to activate it even more and fully express it. And a big transformation will happen to you when you finally surrender yourself to your sexual impulses and you stop rejecting that sexual energy inside of you. And when that happens, then you actually go out there and give yourself permission to act it out. And the difference from this kind of attitude versus the previous attitude, which is all about, oh my gosh, I have these impulses, I just want to get it out of my system and have sex in strange places. The difference is that when you accept that those impulses are so powerful, when you accept that sexuality is such a potent energy, that you no longer feel guilty about it. And you no longer are trying to suppress it to the degree that it creates like a balloon effect, where one day you just go all nuts and have five partners and do crazy uninhibited risky things so to avoid that you want to accept sexuality as this physiological energetic sometimes very impulsive mechanisms inside you that have their own language that have their own physiological mechanisms and properties and your job is to accept them act them out and give it some thought for how you're gonna act it out. So for example, sometimes it's necessary to look for sexual partners and not to be inside of a monogamous relationship because those impulses are so powerful that actually if you don't act them out, they will influence your personality in a negative way and they will delay that explosion of sexual desires. They will build up that sexual explosion, delay it because you're trying to be monogamous at the time when those impulses really want to come out, 
and then it's like a volcano it's going to erupt and that's how usually people get into trouble if throughout your life you consistently give yourself sexual experiences will with, with thought with with um reflection with awareness that's the formula for a healthy sex life and so i've learned to never promise anyone that i'm going to be monogamous i've learned never to promise any commitment any sexual commitment to anyone because after 20 years of having sex i know it can't work it just doesn't work this way um, it's not just we are not made to be monogamous it's not a, it's a, that's not what this is about this is about physiology, biology, and the certain properties of sexuality that are out of our capability to suppress and manage. And this is the, the myth in all of sexuality that these properties can be managed. They cannot be managed. This sexuality is like an energy out of a different dimension. Uh, human beings are not capable they're not capable of managing these sexual impulses all the time. Now, there is a moment in our lives where we can manage them a lot better, and that is after we have sexually completed ourselves. And I, I introduced the concept of sexual completion many years ago in one of the courses. And it's about expressing ourselves almost until we empty the bucket of sexual content that physiologically and psychologically we need to express to get to know ourselves and to get to know other people through a sexual contact that sexual contact has a benefit we are putting ourselves in front of so many other people in such close proximity that we benefit from it outside of sex we benefit in terms of psychological awareness psychological growth close proximity to other human beings and our learning and discovery in the process. So sexual completion serves that purpose. The management of sexual impulses is possible, but later in life, after having had a ton of sex. So I highly recommend to anyone, go out there, have all kinds of sex that you want to have. Be aware about what you're doing, be proactive in terms of protection, in terms of choosing partners that are safer than the ones that show up when you are completely out of control and with age and year after year after year you will notice that those impulses are going to gradually diminish it's not like they're losing power it's not like something wrong is happening it's simply those are energies and after you discover the 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 psychological and um the the inner self-discovery moments that happen inside of sexuality, all of a sudden sexuality is not going to need, your sexual energies are not going to need to show up all the time. And so today in my life, I don't have a lot of sex. I, I don't crave it as much as I used to. I, I sometimes I can't even jerk off to some of the situations that I used to jerk off all the time. And not because there's something wrong with me. Uh, I'm in fact in perfect health and in, in, in an amazing state of physical and emotional health. But it's just those things lose power. Those things just simply kind of like vanish gradually year after year. And it's supposed to be this way because when we look at the big picture, you as a man, you're not supposed to be spending all of your life managing your sexual energies. That would be a waste of your life. A lot of people do that because they're sexually addicted. But that's a different discussion. We'll talk about this in a moment. Your life is about accomplishment as a man. Your life is about contribution to society about ascending yourself to fo focus on your purpose, focus on your dreams, focus on your destiny, your legacy. And so to make that possible, Mother Nature, I believe Mother Nature gave us a certain moment in our lives, say from 40 until 60 or 70, where we focus on our, our destiny, our purpose, our dreams. And I think for that reason, sexuality diminishes and diminishes so that we have we can focus on our cognitive ability, on our, the meaning that we want to create for ourselves and for others. And that's why we want to have a lot of sex in our 20s and 30s, so that that is not transferred into our 40s and 50s, and we are, you know, going crazy, acting out our impulses, and responding to the nature's presence in our bodies through the sexual cravings, and intercepting the, the more 
I don't want to say meaningful, but they are meaningful tasks in our lives. And so that's why it is important to recognize sexuality, take it very seriously as a physiological process that has a certain moment in our lives, kind of like puberty, to fully express itself. And later we focus on other dimensions and our other things in life. What is sexual addiction? Sexual addiction happens when we, uh, when we have fallen, we have fallen into sexual behaviors that happen without awareness. That's all it is. Sexual addiction is simply engaging in a perpetual cycle of sexual contact that has certain kind of frequency, certain kind of intensity. But the common theme in sexual addictions and also watching a lot of porn is that our brain is turned off. Our awareness is turned off. And one of the biggest transformation in my life with sexuality was to actually to reflect about it. And during sexual contact, to actually ask myself, how do I feel? I remember several years ago, I was inside of an intercourse and I asked myself, how do I feel? How do I feel? And it shocked me to say, I actually feel bad, that I actually felt, what am I doing here? Why am I doing this? I don't even know this person. Why am I doing it with this person? Why am I even involved in this? So I noticed how a lot of these sexual behaviors are kind of like an automatic, automatic pilot, no awareness, no situational or contextual awareness. And that's how these addictions thrive. They're like an automatic pilot, these patterns of associating sexuality and sexual behavior with a certain fictional benefit. And we, we invent that benefit. And the, that's why these, these addictions maintain themselves. The moment you bring awareness, the moment you start actually notice how you, noticing how you feel inside when you're having sex with the people that you have sex with, you will see a breakthrough, a transformation. You're going to realize sex is not what, it, you, not what you thought it is. It actually doesn't bring people together. And that was after 20 years of having sex, I think this is the number one, number one lesson for me. Sex does not bring people together. It's a huge myth. For sex to bring people together, both partners have to be in a space of pure innocence, in a space of spiritual connection and integration. They have to be kind of, uh, their inner baggage has to be worked out. And in those situations, yes, yeah, sexuality can bring people together. But how many men do you know that are like that? How many couples are like that? Very few, maybe one in a thousand, one in a thousand. So for most people, sexual connection does not lead to a better relationship. In fact, for most people, sexual experiences are destroying their relationships because they create a follow through with, um, with the desire to control someone, especially if the sex seems to be good, if it feels good, or if there's, uh, someone has a certain body parts that have been given a masculinity, a meaning or context. Uh, when people start adding meanings and definitions and symbolisms to certain body parts that actually have no benefit at all at the broader big picture life scenario. And so in those situations, uh, it's a trap. Uh, we believe that sexuality brings us closer, but what brings us closer or what people believe brings them closer is the satisfaction of their expectations of symbolism inside of body parts. They don't have something, someone has something, especially with big penises and big balls and the symbolic, the, you know, the kind of cliche symbolism that exists embedded in big penises, big testicles, certain musculature, a certain physique. People invent the benefits of that where there's no benefit to that. Really, it's just a body. And sexuality seems like it's connecting but it's not connecting. I've had sex, I've had best sex ever with so many people, none of them are in my life, none of them. And so if we were to, if sex really connects with people, wouldn't all men be in relationships today? Because everybody's having sex out there. So sexuality does not connect. It's a huge myth. And that was a breakthrough for me. It was a breakthrough on the level of massive transformation. 
It's like the moment I realized sexuality does not connect, I was like, wow. Uh, an, an enormous, enormous relief happened. I finally realized that it's that human connectedness or relatedness and the process of making that happen, it's a journey outside of sexuality altogether. Now we can go really deep with this and we can argue the function of gay sex in our lives, especially if there are no children, uh, that there will be no baby. So we don't actually have to have sex. And I know this is kind of like, you're probably not ready to hear this, that we can, but, but we can have, theoretically speaking, we can have amazing relationships with physical attraction, but we can remove sexuality from it and we can still maintain those amazing relationships because sexuality doesn't have a biological purpose. Sexuality does not have a purpose. In other words, our physiological design, our cognitive design of our gay identity does not benefit from sexual activity outside of pleasure and outside of the common themes that show up in sexuality. But if we were to remove sexuality, it would be a lot different than if you remove sexuality from straight people. See, removing sexuality from straight people is a different kind of thing than removing sexuality from gay people. I, I know I'm, I'm kind of challenging you in a, in a theoretical way, in, in kind of conceptual way. I hope you see where I'm going with this. I'm not asking you to remove sexuality from your life. I just want to share with you some ideas that I, I've noticed after so many years of having sex that, that at a certain moment you ask yourself, what if you completely eliminate sex from, your, from the relationships you're building? It actually, all of a sudden you realize that, that life would be easier with these men. That you know, it's a higher level of consciousness and many men are, would not agree to this. And I get that, but it is possible. It is possible. And I think on part of me says maybe in the future, when we really kind of discover ourselves on a sexual level, we're going to find that there is a space of life or space of being in sexuality or, or in our relationships where we don't have to bring in sexuality at all. We just have sensuality. We have a uh, very close contact. We have uh, a lot of intimacy a lot of touch, but the sexuality on the level of an intercourse does not have to be there at all. Does not have to be there at all. And it's not going to make the relationship worse. In fact, it's going to make the relationship better. Obviously, I'm kind of speaking out of my mind right now. I, 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 I wanted to do this impromptu video for you about my experience of sexuality. So if this seems to be a little bit disorganized, I apologize. I just wanted to lay it all out there with you for you without having to create a bulleted point uh, out, outline because I feel like the conversation about sexuality carries with itself a certain fear about disclosing the, our, our true inner sensations and opinions about it because we judge each other based on our sexual practices. We evaluate each other in terms of our sexual preferences. So there's a lot of that, that strangeness about sexuality in our community that doesn't have to be there. So I wanted to, to demonstrate to you that that freedom of sexual conversation, that uh, there's nothing to be afraid of here. Um, sex, when it's there and it's amazing, it's great, but when it's not there, it's not gonna really impact your life in a negative way. And there are many pleasurable things in life with relationships that are even much more pleasurable than sexuality. So I think we should, we should not obsess over sexuality as much as we obsess about this. We want to be more educated about this and we want to understand how it influences our choices for partners. And at places where it actually disconnects us from each other, we want to bring in our mind and bring in our bigger picture awareness of life and really see that sexuality is not that big of a deal. It's not that big of a deal when we understand how it works, especially inside of relationships. So there is a moment in our lives where sexuality is a big deal from a perspective of physiology. It, it gives us this, it, it almost gets us into a place of losing control. And yes, it's important to be able to understand why this happens. But later in life, and when we want to settle into marriages, into relationships, sexuality is not supposed to be the, the breaking point, the breaking point of your relationships. Sexuality should be understood as separate from the relationship 
not part of the relationship. And this is what heterosexuality, um, where heterosexuality differs. With heterosexual relationships, the sexuality is, has to be embedded inside of the relationship because of children, because of reproduction, safety, about the whole process, the man being there for the woman to help raise children. All of that has to be there. And so sexuality has a different meaning in heterosexual relationships. In gay relationships, we don't have all of that complications. So sexuality and all the rules about it, they can be kept kind of separate from the relatedness. And as time progresses forward, they can be brought into the relatedness, into the relationship in a way that creates a nice connection. Final statement I'd like to share with you is that not everybody has the same level of experience in sexuality. And that creates a disconnection oftentimes, especially when we bring into the discussion the concept of sexual compatibility. Sexual compatibility. And my advice about that is that not to take it too seriously the concept of sexual compatibility. Not, if you wanna have amazing sex, go out there and have it and get it. Don't expect your partner to be your entertainer in the bedroom. Don't expect your partner to be your entertainer in the bedroom. When I look at Frank, and Frank is a beautiful man with the most beautiful body parts that all people search for, but I don't look at him as my sex toy. And I don't want him to look at me as his sex toy. And so because we let go of the objectifying, of the objectification of each other in sexuality, our relationship is a lot better. I'm not interested in sexual compatibility with anyone. The discussion about sexual compatibility actually gives, usually puts a smile on my face because it's a sign of sexual laziness. I kind of laugh about it. It's kind of cute. Those men that have never studied psychology of sexuality or they've never had a real relationship in their lives, they are stuck in the space of that sexual laziness. It's like they roll out of bed in the morning with a heart on and they want someone to take care of them. Usually when we talk about sex sexual compatibility, it's usually a situation when someone is so lazy sexually, they just want to leave the door open and have someone enter through that door and do whatever they want that person to do to them. And that's the only way they're going to feel satisfied. Now, do you, would you believe, do you believe this is a recipe for great connection? for great sexual longevity with another person? Of course not. It's a sign of sexual laziness. The people that invented the concept of sexual compatibility are people that have been disconnected from the broader meaning of life, uh, from the broader necessity of relationships and the quality of those relationships in our life. And that necessity of having good quality relationships has nothing to do with sex. It has to do with having a good life making good money, having good careers, having good health, having a lifestyle that gives you satisfaction. That's why people come together for relationships, to help each other, to be there for each other, to build things together. When you introduce sexual compatibility, it's like saying, none of it matters. If you don't fuck me today and next week in a certain way, then I don't want all that goodness that you can bring to my life. And it's a very silly, very lazy way of looking at sexuality, looking at other people and looking at life. So I, I can't really find any other explanation, but the explanation that it's the men who are sexually addicted, that they are the only ones that promote this concept of sexual compatibility. There's no awareness in there. There is no clarity in there. They are not asking themselves, how am I really feeling when I am doing this thing with this person and doesn't it matter if this person walks away and is treating me like an object? Does that matter? Does that have any influence? And to those people, those things don't matter. They're disconnected from the psychology, from the, um, from the effects of those behaviors that have on them across a lifespan. And that's why these men end up in poor quality relationships, in fact, very poor quality relationships where their true self gets never validated because their only sexual parts get validated. And uh, longer term, these relationships end up in breakups every single time because a true relationship does not exist in the domain of sexuality. It exists in the domain of trust, emotion, and, um, and that deep bonding experience. And sexuality, as we discussed in this video, sexuality often stands in the way of creating that because people prioritize sexual pleasure over pleasure of trust. 
and that's why sexual compatibility is something to watch out for and once you notice someone looks for that sexual compatibility walk away walk away immediately if you really mean business in having a healthy relationship if if someone wants sexual compatibility up front walk away that person is not aware of what's going on they are it's like a horse with shades on they don't know what's going on they don't know what relationships are all about they don't know what sex is all about they're just lazy on a sexual level and just like they're lazy with sex they're lazy with relationships they're lazy with other things that have to be part of a relationship so you have a sign that you can clearly see that this person is simply not ready to be in a relationship in a long-term relationship let alone something as serious as monogamy or marriage that happens down the line as we get older so sexuality is a phenomenal space i love talking about sex all the time i um i encourage everybody to talk about sex all the time and i encourage you to do the following three things so let's have some call to action at the end of this video i encourage you to stop making yourself feel bad about your sexual desires stop feeling guilty stop suppressing yourself i know this this the, the area of sexuality is very complex but the moment that you stop feeling guilty for all the sexual fantasies and desires you want to play out you will be healthier psychologically and you will complete your sexual expression a lot faster and we want that you need that the second part of this action step is to bring awareness to all of your sexual activities next time you have sex ask yourself how am i feeling and ask yourself that question how are you feeling before how are you feeling during and how are you feeling the day after or the evening after and the day after ask those three questions at those three different time frames you'll be blown away for how different you feel than what you thought you wanted to feel so you will feel different emotions than what you thought you were feeling when you were not aware of what was going on in that sexual space and then the third the third action step is practice uh, letting go of sexual compatibility practice that sexual compatibility is a trap it's only temporarily pleasurable longer term it's a trap and it can ruin people's lives it ruins relationships longer term people eventually break up don't talk to each other because there was nothing that connected them outside of sex so it's like it's it's not a very productive space of interacting with people it's a very high risk kind of interaction where if something happens down the line because sexual compatibility is such a weak way of connecting the person will simply disappear from your life never want to hear from you and 10 years five years or even six months of your life will be completely wasted with this person so number one don't feel guilty about your relationship desires fantasies then and and uh, bring in acceptance of that number two bring in awareness of that how do you feel before during and after and finally let go of the sexual compatibility i think these would be the most important lessons i've learned over 20 years of having a lot of sex obviously the final part would be it relates to sexual compatibility the final part would be to not pretend that sex actually connects people together notice when you have great sex with people what happens it usually doesn't work you can't connect with them on a relationship level so let go of the myth that sex actually connects people together in most cases or if not in all cases across the longer term lifespan of that relationship sex does not connect with people trust being there for each other making a difference in another person's life bringing value to the other person's life that's what connects people together not sex so this is my advice to all of you after having a lot of sex in my life lots of struggles a lot of challenges these are the four ideas that i believe will make a huge impact in your life uh, i created a course called evolution that takes this to the ultimate level this course is actually available inside of the biggie family social program for free it's one thousand dollar course available for free in the biggie family social program i hope you take advantage of this because it helps you see all the parts of sexuality that are hidden not talked about and helps you transform your life because when sex no longer holds you back it brings a lot of opportunities and possibilities to create relationships that are a lot more meaningful a lot more valuable 
settling down, creating the marriage that you always wanted, all of that is possible. Sex breaks up 97% of all relationships in the gay world. So imagine what will happen when you understand sexuality for yourself and never use sex to disconnect from someone. And that is my mission in terms of teaching about sexuality. I would rather you have the best relationship of your life than the best sex of your life because the best relationship of your life actually will give you the lifestyle, will give you the experiences, will give you the, all the pleasure from trust and togetherness that compared to sexuality is like a huge mountain and sexuality is this little hill of pleasure. So I hope that this makes a difference in your life. For more videos like these, please visit my website at paulangelo.com. As I mentioned at the beginning of this video, those of you who are ready for a transformation, join us at the Big Gay Family Social Program and save at least five years of dating disappointments. Get connected fast, stay connected, never feel alone, have access to high quality men that are always available to want to be there with you so that you're never alone and never disconnected. That's the message of the Big Gay Family Social Program. I'm looking forward to talking to you soon. Until we talk in the next video, as always, my friends, go out there, think big, stay present, and be a leader in your life today. Signing off, talk to you soon.